young people. Yuck, eh? They don't wash. They're so bloody sincere and dramatic without knowing anything. They're unruly. They're always shagging. They can walk upstairs without wheezing. They've not ruined their lives with a string of addictions, poor life choices and broken romances. Stupid, supine, fatless, hopeful bastards with their modern music. It's not jealousy, all right. At least I'm younger than the young ones in this week's game called... The Young Ones. Hell, some of them are even dead. R.I.P. Rick. In fact, Rick wrote The Young Ones along with Ben Elton and Lise Mayer. And it was a breath of sitcom fresh air in a time when charmless crap like Robin's Nest, George and Mildred and That's My Boy ruled the mirthsome roost. The rise of the alternative comic was coming to its apex. And the anarchic surreal comedy, which wasn't afraid to challenge the logic of the young ones, was the perfect antidote to Last of the Summer Wine and its genteel pondering and its people going downhill on a bath. Don't see you with a computer game, combo! The BBC Two show, which ran from 1982 to 1984, made household names of Rick Mayle, Nigel Planer, Adrian Edmondson and Alexi Sale. No offence, Christopher Ryan, but Dave Hedgehog is still a legend. It was an iconic show, a pop culture classic that managed to wangle more cash from the BBC coffers for its stunts and destructive props in a rather clever way. You see, the producer got around the low budget afforded to sitcoms by having it reclassified as a light entertainment show, which were given way more money to work with. Do you want to know why Motorhead, The Damned and Madness just suddenly turned up and performed a song mid-story? Well, that's the reason why. The Young Ones wasn't classified as a comedy. It was a light entertainment show. It's a very odd, very strange, very silly and very hilarious 40-year-old television programme. And if you've not watched it, let me slap you across the hand with a ruler and then quick march you towards the nearest streaming service, such as iPlayer, which is showing it at the time of recording, or indeed to a DVD set and watch both series forthwith. The Young Ones computer game was published by Orpheus Limited, a company that released this, a text adventure called Underworld The Village, and, well, not much else on the ZX Spectrum. It was created by the team of Richard Wilkins and Stuart J. Rucroft, who between them had made a handful of coin-up conversions, along with some original titles for various software houses. The Young Ones game came out on the Amstrad and Commodore 64 also, and retailed at £7.95 in the year. 1985. The game takes place in the ramshackle, dirty student house of Vivian, Rick, Mike and Neil as they face eviction by landlord Comrade Blowovsky. Each of the four housemates must pace the murd-encrusted dwelling, looking for all their belongings before they can find pastures new to foul up with their slovenly violent ways. Load up your avatar's carrying receptacle with all of your character-specific paraphernalia, and they can be on their merry way. The other boys, being right shits that they are, will potentially take away your possessions, so be sure to get them back. The puzzles involved with acquiring the objects are suitably anarchic and surreal. You can interact with various things around the decrepit digs, including the other chaps, with their speech bubble conversations mirroring a typically bitter and funny interaction that they'd have in the sitcom itself. Now this all sounds great, but in practice it consists of the four characters shuffling about the hallways of their house, talking to themselves in about six stock phrases followed by a weird object. It's sort of like the residents of a nursing home slowly losing their minds. It feels like there's a competent bit of coding going on initially, having the four characters strut about, finding the objects they need all at once. But in reality, the characters are just as dim and uncooperative as their television equivalents. The boys will wander about picking things up that they don't need, hold on to them for a while and then drop them somewhere else. It's never straightforward to do, and when you do do it, it just goes on and on and on. Rick's quest even features a game-breaking bug, which stops you finishing it. That's nice and helpful, isn't it? 
It's really quite dull to play, with the footstep noises and dropping sound becoming a soul-sapping annoyance. Graphically, it's smoothly animated and the characters look fairly individual, but vary in quality wildly. Neil and Vivian are very distinctive, but Rick's Jedi Padawan hair strand is all that denotes the character for being him. And as for Mike, well, he looks like a nondescript jelly baby given life by a gelatine necromancer. And there's more colour clash here than a 1989 Bermuda shorts party. The multiple screens and speech bubbles appearing on screen is baffling to the brain for the most part too. My brain was befuddled more than once just looking at this chaos in Sioux, which although it sounds quite young onesie, actually doesn't work as a computer game. And that's the thing about the young ones. There's a the start of a good idea here. It's influenced a little bit by back to school and school days and a lot by everyone's a Wally, but without the panache of any of those games. A better young ones humour game is actually present in the one man effort by Adrian Edmondson for Virgin Games, which was an adaption of his book How to Be a Complete Bastard. If you can get past the weird TNR Nog screen navigation, you'll find a level of playability and violent gross out humour profoundly lacking from the proper title, The Young Ones. It was free on a cover tape, which is how I think most of us found that game. And for a Young One style experience, that's the game to go for out of the two. Going back to The Young Ones and how it was received by the gaming press at the time, well, it was a bit mixed. Crash in their issue 29 gave it a 42% and said, When I played the game properly, I got very bored as there isn't much to it. I can't recommend it. Your Sinclair in their issue 6 declared that if you're a fan of the series, you'll probably love it. But it wears thin very quickly. They gave it a 7 out of 10. Sinclair users issue 51 found it very average and they gave it a 3 out of 5. They declared that it had disappointing graphics and is a rather chaotic game. Well, that's pretty sad, isn't it? The game is a shame and I don't know who to blame, as Rick would write about it in one of his poems. He didn't, and I'm speculating why we there, but he might have. All right. Next up, two quiz shows I've never even heard of. So that's fun. I have to do actual research. Ugh. Like, subscribe, and K thanks bye.